hey everybody welcome back to milky way season now that the uh, summer months here in the northern hemisphere have arrived and we are swinging back into the view of the galactic core of the milky way one of the questions that you may have in your mind when we head out into the field is what focal length lens should i use to shoot the milky way and uh, while this might seem like a fairly minor uh, decision in the grand scheme of things it's certainly one of the important ones that really dictates the uh, feel and shape of your overall composition. So here's a real quick and easy way to explore how the answer to that question may affect some of your decisions. So what I have here are two different uh, shots of the galactic core region of the Milky Way. On the one on the left is was taken uh, in the California High Sierra back in 2012. It shot with a 50 millimeter lens. Uh, the one on the right was shot uh, in 2017 in Wyoming's Grand Teton National Park with a 14 millimeter lens in the same general vicinity of the galactic core region. So you can see, for example, uh, the Lagoon Nebula right just here and right just uh, here. You can just see it peeking over the ridge. You can see the Pipe Nebula very nicely here. It's actually kind of hidden down here, but you get the general gist of things. And I want to use these two examples to illustrate a way that you can explore in the comfort of your own home how your lens of, how your choice of lens focal length will dictate the feel of your composition. So let's see how we're going to do that. And what we're going to do is to use my favorite free uh, uh, virtual planetarium, which is Stellarium. It's this program here, Stellarium.org. And this is the screen you get when you boot it up if you haven't already seen this. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the Sky and Viewing Options window over here on the left. And we're going to right away go to the Milky Way brightness and change that from one, which is the default value, to three. Okay, so I've just changed that to, to three, and that's good because that'll help you know make the Milky Way pop out some more. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to our date and time window, and we're going to uh, let the sun set. So we're going to advance the hours here. You can see it getting darker, and. Uh, excuse me, the moon coming out, or the sun, stars coming out, and then we have the moon, which is unfortunately located right near the region we're interested in. So that's for the uh, date of tomorrow, which is the 1st of June. What we're going to do is to advance the day, uh, as you can see here, until we're about two weeks away from there. So now we have the moon comfortably below the horizon. And here you can see the Milky Way in its full glory. So that's great. Now, here's the thing. What I want you to do, is, you know, as you can see, first of all, before uh, we get into that, you can zoom in and out by scrolling with your mouse. You can go all the way out. You can go really go all the way in. You can kind of go crazy with some of this stuff, but we're not going to do that in this particular tutorial. All right, so here we have the Milky Way. Now, look down here. Follow the mouse. Follow the mouse. Follow the mouse. Follow the mouse all the way down to here, where it says FOV 121 degrees. The FOV, that's the key here. Okay, that's the key, the FOV, the field of view. What is the field of view? Well, good thing you might uh, ask that question because I have the answer right just here. Here is a table from my forthcoming book, uh, Creative uh, Nightscapes and Time Lapses, which is coming out at the end of this year, 2018, early 2019. And for all the common focal lengths, um, you can see here, 14 millimeters all the way up to 200 millimeters. These are for rectilinear lenses, so this doesn't apply to a fisheye lens. These are for rectilinear, like wide angle lenses are fine. This uh, shows the um, horizontal and the vertical fields of view in degrees. So for 14 millimeter, okay, so that's fine. So, okay, great, Mike, what do we do with that? Well, let's go back here. Remember we have a 50 millimeter and a 14 millimeter lens. 50 and 14 millimeters. Okay, so here's 14 millimeters. The 14 millimeter lens has 104 degrees horizontal field of view. The 50 millimeter lens, right just here, has a 40 degree field of view. Well, let's start with that one. Let's start with the 50 millimeter focal length lens. We have 50 millimeters, 40 degrees field of view, 40 degrees field of view, 40. So what that is telling us is this, the angle uh, subtended by our camera lens from the left to right is 40 degrees, whereas over here it's 104 degrees. So 40 degrees for the 50 millimeters. Okay, great. Go back to Stellarium. This says 121 degrees. So now watch this, I'm gonna zoom in. And as I zoom in, watch what's happening. You see how the field of view is getting less and less? So I'm gonna zoom in, I'm gonna keep zooming in, I'm zooming in until it gets to 40 degrees. 40 degrees, I'm almost there. I'm al I've always been terrible at video games, so uh, we're gonna call that 40 degrees. And now, so this, is the, this, this field of view in Stellarium has the same field of view as our photograph. So we're gonna to go to 
uh, this view are going to put them side by side and lo and behold they look roughly the same. If In fact if I make this window of Stellarium the same width as my photograph they should match up almost exactly. And they're a little bit offset because this is for Minnesota and this is for uh, in California so there's a latitudinal difference. But you can see here if we line up the uh, the pipe nebula in particular, let's see if we can do that. We have the lagoon nebula and the pipe nebula, it's the dark nebula right here. Lagoon nebula and the dark nebula. You see these two, these look very similar in, uh, in overall dimension and location and uh, everything else kind of scales with that. You see these bright patches and the dark patches and all that good stuff. So going back to Stellarium then, so this is what a 50 millimeter lens image would look like, 40 degrees field of view. See how easy that was? Now let's just go on to the 14 millimeter one. That was 104 degrees. So now we're going to zoom out until, remember we're watching down here, this field of view. We're going to zoom out until that whoop, went past it, 109, oh, there it is, come on, oh man, nailed it, 104 degrees, great. So now if we you know position it like so, and we do the same type of thing, we, this time doesn't look anything like the 50 millimeter one, but whoa, look at that. Is that the same width? That's about the same width. Super similar in overall appearance here. You can see the um, same, you know, f the first order, the same, uh, I have to put this offset, the same dimensions between, you can barely see the Lagoon Nebula here. It's buried in here. The Pipe Nebula is just kind of down in, whoop, there's the Lagoon Nebula. The pipe Nebula is down here. But you can kind of see how now the central band itself is a more prominent feature than this vast sea of stars, which is the more central uh, field of uh, more compositional theme of this other image here. And so that's pretty much it. All you need to do is to know the uh, the um, the uh, the fields of view of your uh, of your lenses, and you can get this in a variety of different sources, um, including this table here. You can just take a screenshot of that if you like. And, but let me show you one last thing before we end up, because this is where things, so that's how you uh, determine what lens to use. So how would, well, let me do, back up a minute. So we're back here in Stellarium. We have a, we're exploring our uh, view of the Milky Way. And we decide, you know what, let's just, let's imagine that we were to fast forward to, here in, we're in June, so we're gonna go to July, to August. Let's say we're in August, and we're sort of like, we really wanna get a vertical Milky Way. And in fact, if we really wanted to get a shot that looks something like this. We wanted to have our, let's imagine we have a nice vertical, I have a nice vertical patch in the trees, or we might want to stand here, so we're actually standing right in front of this. We look over here and okay, look at this, we're back at a field of view of 40 degrees. So this tells us that we'd want to use a 50 millimeter lens to get this shot. On the other hand, if we wanted to get a super vertical shot like this, this is even shorter than a 14 millimeter lens. A 14 millimeter lens was 104 degrees, which is about, so this would be a 14 millimeter shot. And if we wanted to go uh, something like this, we'd have to use a circular fish eye or, or, uh, or the equivalent. But now you can see, so the logic would be something like this. Uh, having understood this, then we would sit down, we'd say, we're gonna open up Stellarium, we're gonna play around with the, you know, the appearance of the Milky Way, well, how do we want this thing to look? We would then go to the field of view, 60 degrees, let's say, just here. And then we would consult our field of view table. In that case, 60 degrees is somewhere between 35 and 24 millimeters, let's say 30 millimeters, and that would give us our focal length. We'd say, okay, we need to use a 30 millimeter lens. Bam, that's it, that's all there is to it. Okay, well, I hope that helped. And uh, if you have any questions, just give me a shout. You uh, can reach me at my email address, mike at mikeshawphotography.com. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook at, at Mike Shaw Photography or Twitter at Mike Shaw Photo. So until next time, this is your Nightscape Professor. So you get out there and shoot your night skies. Take care.